Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's Foundation Friday for over 50s, I'm going to be reviewing Estee Lauder Futurist Hydra Rescue Moisturizing Foundation with SPF 45. This retails for $45. You get 1.2 ounces in the tube and it comes in 20 shades. This is supposed to be a breathable, skin loving makeup with a 12 hour radiant glow. It's buildable, medium to full coverage. Estee Lauder says that it's powered with high performance Estee Lauder skincare, that it soothes visible redness and irritation, that it protects against pollution with antioxidants, and that it hydrates instantly and all day. So we're going to go ahead and put this to a multi day wear test today on more mature, less than perfect skin. I'm 57. I have wrinkles and large pores and some sagging skin to contend with, so I'm always looking for a foundation that will make my skin look better than it is, not settle in my wrinkles, and I know that most people with more mature skin also have dry skin so something hydrating would be great i don't have overall dry skin i am a little dry around my mouth area but i have combo skin so i'm slightly oily through the t-zone and normal the rest of my face i try it with different primers different application methods different sunscreens to really put it through its paces and see if it's going to be a good product that i can recommend to my more mature hot and flashy gals out there so let's get into it this one comes in a plastic squeezy bottle with a pump on the end. It's mainly a water and silicone base. The sunscreen in here is a mix of chemical and mineral sunscreens to give that broad spectrum SPF 45. Of course, you know, you don't get the full 45 out of it if you only use like one pump. That's about 25% of what you need to use to get the 45 on the label. So really you're getting an SPF of 11 out of this if you use like one pump, but you know, it's better than nothing. I always use a higher SPF sunscreen underneath anyway. This also also contains a number of the standard Estee Lauder skincare ingredients like lactobacillus ferment, cucumber extract, hyaluronic acid, there's a bunch of flower extracts in here, there's algae extract, there's a bunch of botanical oils, there's caffeine, and there's a pretty good amount of fragrance. They recommend that you apply it to the skin in the center of the face and blend it outward. They don't really recommend any specific tools. They don't tell you you need a primer or a powder, um, just that it's going to have a luminous finish. So I actually ended up purchasing three of these out of the 20 shades. There isn't a perfect match for me, so the three swatches I have to show you today are 2N1 Desert Beige, 2W1 Dawn, and 3N1 Ivory Beige. All right, so let's get started going over the previous days that I wore it. So for the first day, I tried the two neutral shades that I had on the side of my cheek. This is 2N1 and 3N1 side by side. And as you can see, they're both pretty cool and one's too light and one's too dark. So I ended up just mixing those two together to wear that day. I already had on my normal Holy Grail sunscreen, which is a mix of Elta MD UV Elements SPF 44 with Paula's Choice Super Light SPF 30. I applied the makeup to one side of my face with a damp beauty blender, and I applied it to the other side of my face with the BK Beauty 101 brush. This foundation blends so easily with both the sponge and the brush. Probably use the equivalent of two pumps of the foundation. There's still about a pump's worth smeared around on there. I feel like I just fell into a vat of perfume. The coverage looks pretty solid medium. I would need to spot conceal a couple of things if I wanted perfect coverage. I decided that I liked how it looked, so I wasn't going to really build it up too much. The finish is really luminous, which I'm not usually a big fan of, but I gotta say, I loved how this was sitting on my skin. It just looked so skin-like and so natural, and the coverage is so solid and beautiful. I just thought it looked great. I did go ahead and powder my T-zone to take down the luminosity around there where I have enlarged pores and some texture. All right, I got the rest of my makeup on, and so far so good. It's only giving me the tiniest little bit of settling in my little smile lines here. It's really giving me no settling in my forehead lines. And overall, I think it looks really, really nice. It played really well with the rest of the makeup. The little bit of setting powder really helped to disguise the pores, so I don't feel like my pores and texture are looking enormous, but I feel like it's youthful and glowy on the rest of my face. So where it is settling is just right here in these little smile lines. 
but just the tiniest bit. I feel like I could almost just smudge it out. But it didn't settle in my forehead wrinkles and it felt dry and set. The makeup I have on today, the eyeshadow is Maybelline Nudes of New York. Blush is the Milani Flower Blush in Coral Cove. I have the Laura Mercier Baked Highlighter in 01 Highlight. My bronzer is Makeup Geek Fair Skin Bronzer in Sunkist. And the lippy today is Revlon Super Lustrous Lipstick in 044 Bear Affair. So I had some errands to run. I stopped into Nordstrom and I picked up the shade 2W1 to mix in with 3N1 for the second day. But while I was there, I did have the opportunity to see it reflected at me in some mirrors and in some windows. And I thought it looked great, especially in, you know, department store light. You know how awful department store light is. Every time I saw myself, I still thought it looked great. I didn't feel like my pores and texture were being accentuated. I thought it looked natural and skin-like. At five hours, I felt like it looked almost exactly like it did when first applied. So it was hardly worn off at all. It wasn't sliding around. It wasn't settling into wrinkles anymore. And it still looked skin-like and had a nice soft luminosity that didn't accentuate my pores and texture. So at the 10 hour check-in, my setting powder had definitely given up. So my T-Zone had the original luminous finish from the foundation back, but it didn't bother me because it doesn't look greasy and it hadn't gotten more luminous. It's not really worn off at all, except for a little bit on my chin. My nose still looks really good. I usually don't get makeup to last on my nose past the four or five hour mark, so that was awesome. It was the tiniest bit broken up in my nasal labial folds, but not enough that anyone could see it except me and my 10X mirror. So yay, you guys, love at first use. So I could have just done a one day review on this because I love it so much, but you know, I like to try it with some primers and like try it with your fingers and a different sunscreen. So for the second day, I went ahead and used my favorite chemical sunscreen, which is the La Roche-Posay Anthelios AOX Antioxidant Serum with sunscreen SPF 50. That is a mouthful. I use the IT Cosmetics Gripping Primer on one side of my face. I use the CoverGirl True Blend Base Business Mattifying Primer on the other side. I use my fingers to apply it on the CoverGirl Primer side. Unfortunately, it didn't apply very well with the fingers. See the streak marks here? It's kind of unblended here. Polka dot pores here. So I went over the finger side with the damp beauty blender sponge and I finished up the other side with the sponge as well. I like the look of it again but I just didn't feel like it was sitting on my skin quite as perfectly as it had the day before with the other sunscreen. Now I don't put primer all over my face so I think this is more a function of the sunscreen rather than the primer because like up in the top of my forehead I don't really put primer there but that's where it was looking a little bit more patchy today and didn't have that perfect solid coverage that I had the day before. I put the rest of my makeup on. I thought it looked really good with my makeup on so I was very happy with it again on the second wearing. So at the five hour check-in, I thought it still looked really good, especially considering that I had spent most of the day outside in the rain wearing a baseball cap because of course had to take the puppy and the big dog out a thousand times and this foundation didn't rub off where I had the baseball hat on. I must have put that hat on and taken it off four or five times throughout the day and this foundation didn't rub off. I really didn't feel like the primers did anything to help it at all. I actually felt like it looked not quite as good where the primers were. So I feel like this is one that you don't need extra products with. You don't need a primer with it and it still looks fantastic and wears really long just on its own. I ended up coming back for an 11 hour check-in. All right, 11 hours in the Estee Lauder Futurist for today. And I think it still looks amazing for 11, almost 11 and a half hours. Um, yeah, really loving this. I mean, I, it did look better yesterday. The application was better yesterday. Everything was better. It definitely looked better with the other sunscreen. Went on much more seamless and solid and perfect. Take a look up close. I just feel like today it's just a little bit more patchy up in these areas, but it's not bad looking. It's again, not getting shiny, not getting greasy, not accentuating pores and texture at all. It is a little bit more worn off on my nose, 
and a little patchy in here. I thought it still looked really good. Normally at this point, my nose is bright red. My foundation is sliding around. It's all gathered up in my nasal labial folds. It's making my upper lip look creased. This was doing none of that. Okay, so those were the first two days. I did end up wearing it a third day just to test a third sunscreen. It was more to test the sunscreen than the foundation actually because a lot of you guys have been asking me about this one. It's the CeraVe Hydrating Tinted Sunscreen. So I did wear it with this. Um, it looked great again. I kind of like this sunscreen, but it did decrease the wear of the foundation overall so that at the seven hour mark, the foundation was looking kind of like it had at 11 hours the day before. So this sunscreen, while it's good to use on its own, was not great under makeup. It definitely shortened the wear of the foundation by quite a bit. All right, now we have a couple other tests to do on it. We've got the flash photo, the face print test, and taking it outside into the sunshine and doing the natural light. So, so I shot all the other lighting conditions earlier. Let me bring those in for you right now. We'll take a look at those. All right, here is Estee Lauder Futurist in the overhead yellowy kitchen light. Natural light. Clouding up a little bit, it's supposed to rain later, but the sun is still pretty dang bright. Overall, I am just thrilled with this foundation. I think it looks great in the yellow overhead kitchen light. I think it looks great by the window. I think it looks great outside in natural light. It's not doing anything bad. I, you know, like the title says, move over double wear. You have got some competition. This stuff is good. All right, let me just go ahead and do a regular selfie with it. All right, you guys, I think this just looks so nice in pictures. It photographs beautifully. My skin doesn't look that textured. It doesn't have like weird shiny spots. It just looks youthful and is reflecting light in such a beautiful way. I did take the flash photo in the darkened room earlier, so let me bring that one up for you now. I think that's a really nice flash picture. I don't think it's giving much flashback. I think it actually looks really, really good. And by the way, I did switch my setting powder up today to the Jeffree Star powder, which if you remember from the last Foundation Friday, what my uh, under eye setting powder looked like, it was just total white flashback from the IT Cosmetics. So if you're looking for a flashback free powder, the Jeffree Star is the way to go. So I guess it's time for the pros and cons on this guy. Well. As you can tell, I am totally in love with it. So it's gonna have a bigger pros column. So on the pros side are the soft luminous finish. Normally I do not like luminous foundations, but this one I love. It's a soft luminosity, so it doesn't really seem to accentuate my pores and texture. I just put on a little setting powder with it and it is perfection. I love how skin-like and natural looking it is on the skin, how I get solid coverage that isn't heavy and cakey. I love it that it's long wearing up to 10 or 11 hours on its own without a primer to help it is epic. <laughs> It didn't settle into pores. It did settle into wrinkles slightly, but not in a way that it cracked and made them look worse. It was easy to apply. It was buildable. It was comfortable. It felt hydrating. It doesn't feel drying at all. So I can definitely recommend this for more mature people who have dry skin. I think you will love it. On the con side are the fragrance and the shade selection. With only 20 shades, I couldn't find a shade match and having to buy two doubles the price up to 90 bucks, which is kind of steep. So I hope that if Estee Lauder is watching that you will put out as many shades as you have in double wear so everyone can find a shade match. That would be awesome. I think this may be going into holy grail status. I love this so much. 
and I think people with dry skin will love it too because it just makes your skin look so youthful and it looks so natural and skin like but yet it gets you, gives you that solid coverage and it's not going to be drying so a really great one Estee Lauder hit it out of the park on this one highly recommend if you want to see where it ranks on the list of all the foundations I've ever reviewed that list is over on my blog I'll put the link in the information box below the video I'll also put links to the foundation the Jeffree Star powder, all the makeup that I'm wearing today, clothes and accessories. So that's it for today's video. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you did, go ahead and give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell while you're down there. As always, I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your watching. So have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.